come set this stuff up. So we're not using technology to help us. Now we're getting more and more alienated by technology and we're becoming up. Writers, I'm not just going to pick on ours, because writers are doing the same thing. Now you can go get a whole book done digitally. And they all crowded up into some club that's got an open mic. And they got their book of stuff with them. And they get up and they, they, they doing some dynamite poetry. Ain't none of that book. I don't understand that. What is wrong with that? Musicians, if one, two, three, four hours from four or five different states, the cost of living here is low compared to all surrounding cities. You know, do we really have to have love from Baltimore to live in Baltimore and use it for what we do? I love having Baltimore as a hometown. It just makes it so possible to do a lot of things. But what would happen, because I'm, I'm one of the ones that I'm adamant about making sure I have creative friends around me. If I have had a conversation with you about our raising hands, that's a lot of people. And if everybody else did the same thing, you'd be surprised how much of an impact you can make. I'm going Mike back to Mr. Briscoe and ask him a little bit about his approach about art. What do you think is some of the mystique that people need to understand about being an artist from your perspective? He's an instructor over in Morgan State. He's taught how many years? Okay, if, if you see the way he answered that question, if you can imagine today's mindset of children coming to Morgan State to learn art, and this dude right here got to try to deal with it. Okay, that's not easy. He talked about ego. Oh, we got it. Come in the door with it. Okay, but he can tell you the real mindset of what's happening with the children today because I'm always trying to keep my pulse on what they're doing. They believe that they can take a piece now do a video, post it online, it'll get a bunch of hits, they'll get recognized, and boom, but we look at them and go, man, crazy. That ain't even where it was. In answering that question, I'll point you to two instances. I'm a product of other people, and there are two people sitting in the front row that actually are very important to my work of civil. First one, my brother, baby, 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 baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, man. Yeah. Yeah. First, first and foremost, because uh, I remember them, I stepped my foot, I stepped from my cat from Morgan State University, Soto, okay, December 21st, 1990. It's one of the few days I remember since And uh, a few months later, I discovered a place called Cultural Expressions. And I was able to sit beside this brother and actually learn what to do with the chalk past that. Because I learned at that moment, I had no clue. As soon as I looked at the work, I was like, I know nothing. First step. So I sat there and I listened. I worked. I sold nothing. I, I, one time, I think I was there for about a year, I sold absolutely nothing. I did no work for anybody. But I sat there beside him and looked at what he was doing and listened to what he was saying. And he wasn't trying to teach me anything. He was doing his thing, talking, doing what baby does. And I was doing what I did. I sit there and I observe and I listen and I listen and I listen and I put it in the memory bank. So, I give all credit to him for what he's passed out specifically, okay? Yeah. Other person is Guy Jones, who was my formal uh, instructor at Morgan State University. And when I talk to students now, I talk about the communication that I used to have with him. And what I learned from him wasn't so much painting or anything like that, but it was more so, every time I would open my mouth and say something, he would contradict me and tell me so many words I'm wrong. And I was okay, so I come back and I try something else. He'd do it again. And finally I figured, basically, he's just trying to throw me, throw back information back at me to make me think about what he's gonna do. And one day I asked him a question, I asked him, what did he learn from graduate school? And this is stuck with me. He said he learned that what in graduate school, that what he did was no more important than what the plumber did in the world. And All the same thing. <laughs> And the same attitude that the plumber takes towards doing his day to day is the same attitude that I need to take towards doing my day to day. So don't talk to me about all the aspirations you have about doing things. Do it. We are now under the risk of having a generation of culturally ignorant students. Because we're not taking the time to nurture the arts when we see it. That's why mentorship is very, very important. We hear that theme going throughout. Uh, 
to me, that's my only personal challenge is for everybody to do more internship. I don't get who it is. Somebody needs to get that information. Uh, but the time is changing. We really need to start now rallying towards our own causes. The new thing now is that in the 70s, we had, uh, we had uh, uh, good times. Everybody can remember good times. Everybody liked JJ's pain. Y'all was culturally engaged and didn't even realize it. Y'all just accept JJ for being stupid, Donald for being cute, and Mike for being smart. And you, 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 the artwork didn't intimidate you because you thought it was cool. Most of y'all watched the show for years and didn't even know who the artist was. Some of y'all actually believe that they did the <laughs> But that's the artist's name of Ernie Arm. The, the biggest revolution in art happened in the 80s with the Cosby Show. Because for the first time, we saw the Huxtables and we saw the Saturday House, and we were like, wow, oh, man, this is kind of cool. It was coming in, y'all didn't even realize it. The difference between what happened during Good Times and the Cosby Show is that by the time the Cosby Show happened, it was more accessible. You could go somewhere and actually get it. You could not get that stuff. Then they realized that wasn't working, so then they took a chance and started hiring more of us to create the work. So there's so many things that happen throughout this timeline that we're not really aware of. If you have art home now, you need to wake up and realize that we are in the midst of a major art revolution right now that nobody's really coined a phrase for yet since the Harlem Renaissance. But we're sleeping. You know, it's time to wake up. It's time to support. I mean, we got the Walters. We got the BMA. I don't want to get on that conversation because we'd be here all day. Because I'm not really pleased with what they're doing. If y'all go there, Black History Month, you can find a show that's got some African American art in it. They own a lot of our work. They keep it in the basement. There's a reason why they keep it in the basement. They realize the value and we don't. But then they want us to come to the museum and we don't see reflections of ourselves, so we don't go. Catch 22. But how are you going to be an artist in this city and don't go to a museum? Room will probably touch hands with a whole bunch of folks, folks lead in the corner. I even see an art dealer friend of mine. See that dude in the back row right there with the hat on? He's looking around like y'all don't see him. <laughs> His name is Alvin Lester. He's a very large art dealer in Richmond, Virginia. He took the time to come down and spend with us today. Um, he's been responsible for promoting many artists' works, and that's the kind of people we need to talk about because they never get any kind of credit for the amount of work they put in. He's been promoting African-American artists for the last, I met him selling uh, Nash's work back at least 20, 30 years ago. And he's still promoting artists even today. Uh, in 1780, Joshua Johnson painted so much, people would come in the studio, he would leave the head blank and say, well, wait a minute, they just line them up on the wall. He came in, you want to portrait painting. And, and you choose the image, and he picked the face and the pain that was already done. He built an ad in the newspaper, which is very incredible, because this is in the heart of slavery. He, he was a free black, he came free at 21. He put it in the ad, Joshua Johnson, Baltimore painter, a black artist. And at the bottom he put, I am a genius. That's our legacy. You see, we're, we've been painting you know, as a group in Baltimore, the longest of anybody in America. Man, in case, in case you guys think this is just some dude that just stood up. I was in high school, walked in, and I said, hey! And he started, mentor, he started mentoring me along with us. And now here I am today, this is my student that I'm mentoring. Right. I'm passing <laughs> Being comfortable with art, do you feel like some of that lacks out of not having support in your own home from your own parents and things of that sort? Because I grew up in a home where I danced, but writing and all of that art, my parents didn't know until I was 17. So I hated for like eight years. I'm, I'm gonna let Karen address that, but I'm gonna add this. Uh, support's gotta be 10 years. Uh, if you talk to most artists, they don't have support. And I always tell artists that you have support not to be because they think everybody got it like that. Uh, you know, Karen has two parents that's right there, my two parents are right there. Uh, but not always. Because see, at the beginning stage, when I started doing, when I was going, everybody thought I was crazy. Because of the things I wanted to do. And so you might not get that in the beginning stage, when you get ready to do what you're ready to do. But 
you can do by example. I want my parents' support by actually implementing my dream. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, and I can honestly say that I have been, I'm 54 years old. I've been 54 years young. I've been yeah. doing, 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 basically all my life. And um, when I was younger, and I come from, from school, I went to school, and I'd be in my kitchen home, we had your mom take the picture, put it on the refrigerator, tape, tape it up, and it was like, wow. And we were really excited to see it. My mother took my, my pictures, put them in a frame, put them on the wall in her room, and showed me what a gallery was. So I say that to say that, if, you know, if you, if you didn't have the support that you would have had at home, you are able to surround yourself around other people. I share my parents. I can probably count 15 people in here right now that call my mom, mom, and my dad, dad. Mom, dad. <laughs> because of the fact that, you know, you know, they nurtured me as, as a kid. My mom was a designer, I have a sister that's an a artist, I have a, a sister that's a dancer, I have a brother that's an artist. So I come from a line of creative people, but I was always encouraged to, 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 to work. Open that mind up. That's not something you do, that's something you are. That's what we're preaching today. Because that's new education. You know, if you are, if you are uh, 50 and above, you were taught, number one, to get a real job. You know, that's just something you can do. Put that away and you better be looking for how you're going to feed yourself. Then all of a sudden, if, you, if, you, if you're 40 and above, your parents got a little more neutral, but they still didn't believe you were never going to succeed as an artist. You know, so we're saying, okay, it's the 21st century. We know that all this is connected. Uh, we got folks here from 70 on down that have been doing this. It's time for us to really look at what changes to make. One question that we got to get ready to How do you balance the creative side of being an artist with the business side of being an artist? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, I'll try to condense that. I'll try to condense that. Because that's a big question that we require another hour. The balance comes from you being committed first. Because you can have talent and not be committed to the talent. Once you're committed to the talent, something happens to you. The fibers in you change when you're committed to this thing. I know, without preaching or giving any references from the Bible, that the Creator gave me this for a reason. So all I'm going to do is get out of the way and do it. I'm not going to complicate it with all the isms and the odds. First of all, He gave it to me for what? Therapy. So for you artists that ain't selling, get your therapy. If you ain't getting your therapy, you're going to have some problems. Now, if you decide you want to make a life and a business out of this, oh, that's another whole commitment. So you're getting your therapy out of the way. Now you want to sell it? Okay, well, what do you need to sell? You still got to be committed to All right, need everybody look this way. All yes, eyes sir. this way. Big smile, big smile. One more time. Again, in the back row. Look this way. Right this way.
First time at the Baltimore Downtown Cultural Arts Center. Uh, we're trying to welcome everybody to this first show here. It's called Baltimore Unsung, where we invited all of some of Baltimore's greatest artists. And uh, we got a real good turnout, and we hope we can continue this. But keep art alive. Mm -hmm. Well, the, we really, we really kind of left the left it loose. We were more interested in having the artists participate than we were. Uh, a jury show because they, we get that all the time and most most of the time we never even survive the jury process it really adds to the frustration of a lot of artists participating in events here in Baltimore so what we did was basically just took a curtain call of who was willing to participate and uh, we didn't do a theme we told everybody to put their best piece in uh, because you can imagine with 40 artists in the time frame we have we didn't have a lot of time to put things together but with that being said we did a wonderful job of putting the pieces together so uh, but you know the artists are around if we could have do three more of these. See it again? Well, this is kind of an example of what we're trying to start doing. Uh, whether it becomes an annual event, I'm, I'm not sure. But we, we could have done three of these shows with 50 artists in each show. It's that many artists in Baltimore. Well, it's excellent. It's such a, a great variety, um, very powerful, beautiful. Thanks. I thought I haven't seen everything yet, but so far everything is great, and I love the talk. Excellent. Uh, no, my husband is highly. Julia will be there.